So I, uh, this is the second in a two-part series. I think it's going to be a two-part series on N-acetylcysteine. Um, I'll mention, obviously, of course, glutathione, uh, because glutathione is made from N-acetylcysteine. Um, N-acetylcysteine used to be a, well, it used to be a prescription only. It was used for things like uh, acetaminophen poisoning. Um, <clears throat> in the first video, I um, forgot to cover all of the natural sources for sulfur. And uh, I did wear a, a different shirt. Uh, I got some feedback by one of my viewers that I should change shirts. Uh, what that viewer doesn't know is that I do my videos in batches. So I'll do between uh, two to six videos on Saturdays because I've up until recently I've had a full-time job. I have to work. Or, or, I don't have to work, but I do uh, because I enjoy it. But that's a job, and this is uh, this is fun. So I do these on on Saturday. And again, let me get back to the point. Uh, the sulfur-containing antioxidants. These are all excellent antitoxins, or not all of them, but these are an antitoxins that we're talking about. And these are the foods that we're talking about: um, <clears throat> Jerusalem artichokes, which I haven't had; asparagus, I've had plenty of. Bok choy, I, I've tried multiple times, but I can't, I can't make bok choy. I eat a lot. I'm a, I, I don't totally live on it, but a couple of my very staple foods are broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, uh, and cauliflower. So those are big ones. I can't eat onions. Uh, onions keep me up all night because of the, the digestive problems. And actually, most of these will cause digestive problems. Um, <clears throat> I did share, I, well, I didn't share this part. I woke up the other night having a dream that I was a, uh, a, a uh, walking dead zombie. And I, part of this whole experience was that I was having a lot of gas. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I was sweating profusely and I was having a lot of gas. I, I had nothing but Brussels sprouts uh, slaw for dinner. It was great slaw. Um, but again, <clears throat> there you go. Um, maybe too much information. You see this is all in yellow. Do you think there's a reason for the yellow and uh, the yellow in my shirts? Sulfur is yellow. And again, sulfur is the, one of the ma major active ingredients of this antioxidant and antitoxin uh, compound. So that's about enough, enough on that, I think. Um, Yes, you can get N-acetylcysteine by supplements, but uh, why don't you make sure that you've eaten plenty of those veggies before? Uh, if you go back and see uh, my video on glutathione alone, it's eat your veggies. If you, if you go back and see my videos on what I eat, it's tons and tons of um, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, and of course, one of uh, a very, very popular, quote, superfood, end quote, kale. Um, before we get deeper into uh, uh, more molecular stuff about, um, excuse me, in, in acetylcysteine uh, and, and choline, excuse me, in acetylcysteine and glutathione, just a brief introduction um, of me and my channel. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R. Uh, this is, uh, I have a practice, it's called PrevMed. We have a website called PrevMed Heart Risk. I'd recommend, uh, at least right now, um, September of 2018 and before, don't, uh, don't spend much time on that website. It's mostly focused on the practice itself. Uh, we will be transitioning it, or the plan is to transition it into more of a blog to contain a lot of the content that I've covered on the, uh, the videos. But we've got to develop a system for that first. Um, I started off as an ER doc. Uh, too much, way too, there's way too much preventable d death, disease, and disability people bring into the ER. I went to uh, Johns Hopkins to learn prevention, uh, did well, ended up running the program, and have spent 30-something years uh, helping primary care docs, being the medical director, CMO for large staff, 800 and more docs, um, helping them prevent disease rather than wait until it happened. Uh, I've seen my uh, share of patients doing the same thing as well. Now, one thing I didn't mention on the previous uh, video was 
And, and while I'm adjusting that, I'll just make the comment about the previous video in the, in the series and all of my series. In almost all of my series, you do see um, one video, one or two or three videos. The early videos are not that well organized. Um, they're almost, it's, it's, one of my viewers, in fact, criticized me for it. it that's a random walk. You ought to listen to your wife and uh, bottom line it. Tell us what you're going to tell us. Tell us and then tell, tell us what you told us. And with all due respect to that uh, viewer, and I do think he had uh, good intentions, there's a couple of things about the way I, I present. On, on my um, videos, what I do is I gather a lot of information, much more than you can put on one video. And as I'm in the information gathering mode, um, I don't quite have all of the things organized or the conclusions developed. I think that's natural, and, and I've, in fact, I think that as humans, we tend to want to organize and control stuff before we really have a good, um, a good ability to do that. Uh, I think that's one of the fallacies of hum being a human. You think you control more than you actually do. So I do have a style where I present almost a random walk, uh, pre present a lot of different facts, the first couple of videos, and then we get close more to conclusions. Uh, in the latter part of the series. The other thing that does from a learning perspective is help us um, uh, help us get some repetition. We hear it three or four times, a lot of these components uh, three or four times before the series is over and that repetition does help us uh, remember things. Now we've had the, I've had this up here for a, a bit. This is a lawsuit. This was put up obviously by some law, legal group who is proud of their work on selling, on uh, litigating with Tylenol. The point behind this is, how does the damage from Tylenol or acetaminophen happen to the liver? It's an oxidation type of activity. So um, my first exposure to N-acetylcysteine was using it IV in the West Admit Room, the large um, Major emergency, room, major medical emergency room, internal medicine emergency room at Charity Hospital in New Orleans. I couldn't find any pictures of that, but it was very similar to this type of uh, military uh, major trauma uh, triage environment. You've got multiple um, medical teams, each one surrounding uh, another serious patient. That's exactly what our West Admit Room uh, looked like at Charity. Um, <clears throat> this patient is obviously in military anti-shock um, anti trousers. Um, in the West Admit Room, we would have two or three people most days on uh, with a nasogastric tube and or um, activated charcoal, but getting IV in acetylcysteine. That in acetylcysteine was... Um, deoxidizing uh, the liver because the liver was in panic mode trying to um, uh, metabolize and protect the rest of the body from an overdose of Tylenol. Other patients would be on uh, N-acetylcysteine as well, uh, some of it inhaled. Um, mucor mist N-acetylcysteine is a, an, a mucolytic, mucus, uh, mucus from asthma, in the chest and lytic means it cuts it so it cuts the uh, asthma so again a couple of uh, prescription level uh, activities for um, in acetylcysteine NAC um, after quite a few years of, of use of that at, at a prescription level uh, they dropped the dose and made it OTC so you can get um, let me see if I can find that real quick Yes, you can get NAC supplements now, N-acetylcysteine supplements. They tend to go as high as 600 milligrams. The prescriptive level uh, N-acetylcysteine is 2.5 grams or more. Why don't you? Why why do they have the higher doses in um, pre prescription level? Because it causes significant side effects. Remember what I told you a few minutes ago about uh, eating too much. Um, Brussels sprouts coleslaw, you get sig significant and severe sometimes GI, gastrointestinal irritation with, the, uh, with those prescription level uh, N-acetylcysteines. What do they use them for? 
It's used for uh, a multitude of different things. Um, docs are trying it for... Um, um, my brain's not working. Cognitive decline. Um, <clears throat> and actually, this patient that was asking me about it last week is a um, Bredesen patient. Bredesen talks a lot about and very... Um, enthusiastically about uh, glutathione. Glutathione, again, is not something that uh, you can absorb in terms of um, uh, supplementation, but N-acetylcysteine, again, is the precursor. Here, This is a brief, I'm not going to go too far in depth because we covered it some on the last, uh, the other video. NAC, N-acetylcysteine, helps with uh, cellular membrane health. It, uh, again, is an antioxidant. Here's glutathione um, components. Thiolization, thio uh, in chemistry, organic chemistry means uh, sulfur. It's a sulfur, uh, sulfhydryl um, um, moiety, and moiety just means a component of the, the molecule. So you see some old friends here, vitamin E, vitamin C, the other antioxidant. Um, a couple of the other key antioxidants, they're very popular and uh, used. You don't want to see my notes, or I don't want to show them to you anyway. Um, <clears throat> what does the glutathione molecule look like? It's got a carb. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six seven, eight, nine, about nine carbons in a chain. Got a lot of uh, double bind uh, oxygens on it. Carboxylic acid on either end. This two carbon uh, thing is a glycine right here. This is cysteine here. Uh, these three, and uh, the um, ammonia hooked to the uh, double carbon oxygen here starts the glutamic, or um, what's the uh, Chinese food, uh, monosodium glutamate. Uh, if you put sodium on here instead of this cysteine and glycine, you'll get monosodium glutamate. Um, <clears throat> that is the molecule for glutathione the mother of all antioxidants. Uh, there's antioxidant component here, the uh, uh, ammonium, the NH uh, is uh, antioxidant as well. Now, <clears throat> oh, you know what? I, uh, I spoke too soon, didn't I? I gave away the, uh, the store. I did a spoiler and sorry, I'm losing my marker here. Monosodium glutamate, as I said, you take a sodium and add it to that uh, glutamic area and you've got monosodium glutamate. A nice picture of it. What is this? Uh, that's that, uh, sorry about that. That's that two carbons with a, uh, an ammonia and a sulfhydryl on it. That is cysteine. So you put all these together. What is this one? This is that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, here's the, uh, again, another copy of the glutathione. Pardon me. <clears throat> Here is an interesting one. It's the transition from N-acetylcysteine to glutathione. Now, <clears throat> what it, it, I, I'm not too clear on this, but what it looks like happens is you, you drop this carboxyl uh, acid group, uh, I think it's acetic acid over here, um, the glutamic uh, mo uh, molecule uh, adds there. And then you've got the glycine on the other end. So you've got N-acetylcysteine here. That breaks off to lose the carboxylic acid. You've, you're left with L-cysteine. You add the glutamate and the glycine, and you get glutathione. And if there's anybody left after going through that, I am very, very impressed. Okay. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, um, it's not just uh, people forget. There's a lot of focus, especially with uh, different um, preventive groups and um, uh, health groups, supplement um, fans about 
uh, methylation. And you forget sometimes that methylation is very much related to the um, oxidation reduction uh, processes. THF, MTHFR, tetra, uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate. Again, those are part of this whole um, uh, oxidation process. Methionine going into homocysteine, cysteine, and glutathione. So again, just trying to connect some dots uh, with some names that you've heard a lot of times. And going back to that, a different yellow background, for sulfur-rich foods. Again, it's always better to just get it through um, diet if you can. Cabbage, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, which caused me and uh, Janice a difficult evening the other night. Um, broccoli, avocado, and uh, sweet potatoes, watermelon and nuts. I wouldn't recommend a lot of watermelon because uh, of the uh, sugar content and the impact on your glucose. Uh, but And nuts we can't have because we've got a family member with a problem in the area. You don't need, that's a different issue. Um, again, those of you that have, that have made it through this far, thank you so much for your interest. And I hope that it's been worth your time.